I wish you a wonderful good morning. Nice to have you with us again. And let us start this beautiful day with a prayer. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this wonderful morning. We thank you for the privilege of living, of being alive. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for this wonderful morning, for all the birds that are already praising you. And we want to also join in praising them. And we want to be ready for everything that you want to teach us and talk to us about this morning. Amen. Sometimes if we talk about love, what we do this year uh, very intensely, sometimes we think, maybe very uh, obviously, but sometimes very deep in our heart, we think if everybody would be like me, it would be so much easier to love them. If everybody would be like me, because I am normal, I do not really know about you, sometimes you are so strange, you are a little bit crazy, you are so different. And if you would be only like me, it would be so easy for me to love you. But I don't know why God created you so differently and so in such a strange way. And especially if you move into the same flat with somebody, if you have married or if you live along uh, with somebody else in your own flat, uh, you realize how different we are. And so there are some questions. Um, am I allowed to put sugar on a carrot salad? Is that crazy for you or is that the, the normalest thing on earth for you? Um, do you? Should you use real candles on your Christmas tree or should you use a uh, Christmas tree at all as a Christian or not? And uh, yes, yeah, so there are many, many uh, questions, many important questions in life which we would answer so differently. And so sometimes... It's interesting to think about why God created us so differently. Not only two genders, not only different age groups and generations, but also yeah, people who have different values, different personality types, different uh, cultures and style and tastes, so different habits from my family background. So we are so different. And sometimes we, yeah, it seems like it would be so much easier if you would just be like me. Today we want to open our Bibles in John chapter 13. And in John 13, we find a very interesting story of Jesus um, yeah, at his last night uh, spending time with his friends. And this is a moment where he shows all his love that is in his heart. And I want to read from John 13, starting with verse 1. So it was the last night... Jesus had with his disciples and he had some things on, or things on his heart to teach them about. And in John 13 verse 1 it says, It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. So Jesus was here with his friends and the Bible says he was about to leave this earth again. He knew he came on this earth with a mission and now this mission was nearly completed. completed. And he knew I'm going back to the Father right now, uh, very soon. And I have only a few hours with my friends and then uh, yeah, suffering. And so he picks his words very, very um, carefully. And he knows that the things he's teaching them right now will be in their minds maybe, maybe more than anything else. And so he sits down with his friends, but suddenly they have sat a supper and he stands up and washes all their feet. And this is so interesting because he says here, um, I am moved. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. So the, the clear focus that Jesus had on this evening was one thing. It was loving them. It was loving them. And so if we talk about Easter, it's all about that God shows, showed his love and also called us to follow that love. Sometimes we get lost in so many details that happened in the last night or the last day of Jesus' life that we forget what it is all about. 
So why did Jesus come to the earth? Why did he die? Why did he rose again? It was to show us love and to make us being able to follow him. And if we read that story, it's so important that we understand it with the background of the Old Testament. So imagine you go to the doctor today and you tell him all your sorrows because your leg is so hurting. And then you go home and the doctor told you, eh, please lie down for two weeks and take this very good uh, uh, medicine. There's a little, uh, it's a little cream that you put on your leg and everything will be fine. You think, oh, wow, that uh, sounds great. This sounds very natural. But if you have broken your leg twice, it could be possible that it's not really working. <laughs> and after two weeks, maybe you have more pain than before. So I would say a good doctor is not somebody telling me nice words, but a doctor realizing what the problem is and then following a good treatment. I hope you would agree. <laughs> and with the Bible, it's the same. So if Easter is the good treatment, we really should not forget what the problem was from, from the beginning. So we cannot understand Easter without looking into the first chapters of the Bible that tells us and describes us from Genesis 3 on what the problem was. So if I have a great, great solution, what I want to not really understand the problem, uh, it is very probable that I will not understand what the meaning of Easter is. And so what we really know and what we really need is that Jesus loves us and that he made us able to also to follow him. And I want to ask you, how good are you in allowing God to love you? Because we see a story here where Simon Peter, he really struggled that Jesus would come so close to him and serve him and love him. And uh, I want to read ten, verses 10 to 12 where it says, Jesus answered. So he answered Peter who did not allow him to wash his feet. And Jesus said, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to portray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. Do you understand what I've just done for you? We saw, if you read through the story, we see that Peter did not understand it. And he was even pushing back Jesus. So we realize it's difficult for us sometimes that we allow God to love us. And how good are you in allowing the Holy Spirit to teach you how much God loves you? And sometimes from our background, we are used to, to push back God, yeah, to push back the people who love us. Because there are some crazy uh, tendencies in our mind that we are not worth enough, we are not good enough, we have not deserved it, and all that nonsense. And sometimes we grow up and we are not, still not able and capable of allowing people to love us. And that's so sad because there are so many good friends out there who would like to love you. And sometimes we push back so many people out of our lives. And we do not realize that we are still in the same habit as Adam and Eve. Pushing God, God's presence back. Hiding from God. Although now we have been forgiven. And it's so interesting how this chapter talks about us. Just in the beginning we, we read, Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father, having loved his own. So washing their feet, Jesus did not talk too much. 
He only answered back to Peter. But the chapter begins with the heart of Jesus that Jesus says to you, you are my own. You are his own. And do I allow God that I realize I am his own? Or am I so with my head down, struggling in life, struggle to do this right, struggle to do that right? And I've never allowed God to talk into my life and to teach me, I love you. You are my own. I, I did not only create you, I bought you with a big price, my child. So allow me to love you. And how wonderful it would be to this morning or whenever you hear that message that the Holy Spirit is allowed to speak into your heart. I love you so much. You are so dear to my heart. And it's so beautiful if once in a while through our day we say thank you God that you love me so much. Thank you Father that you love me so much. And I don't know, maybe those words are so strange to you. Because you feel not lovable. Then be obedient. And allow God to love you. He desires to love you. And it's so wonderful if we allow God to love us. Another thing Jesus said to us that we just read. We read in verse 10. Uh, you are clean though not every one of you. Yes, you need somebody to wash your feet from time to time, but your whole body is clean. And Jesus said that as a picture, that if I believe in him, and if I'm willing to lay down my life for him, he sees me as, cl as clean. And especially after Easter, if we realize that God forgave me of everything I've done, Everything. He's not counting any sins anymore. As 2 Corinthians 5.20 tell us. Then I am clean. And Paul also puts that in different words in Colossians 1.22. One of my favorite verses that is sometimes so hard for us to understand. And as Peter struggled to understand and allow the love of God. Sometimes we do the same and in Colossians 1.22, it says, But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through de death to present you, and now listen carefully, to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. But sometimes we think, oh, no, 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 that cannot be. Because, wait a second, if I think about yesterday, oh, yes. I did it again. I'm so sorry. I failed again and I sinned again. So this is, could not be about me. And then I, re I read on and think about the perfect people in church who never sinned again. And I realize Paul wrote that to the not perfect church in Colosse. Sometimes we read it and it is if what uh, Paul would have said, oh no. I just sent away the, the letter to the Colossians and I wrote the verse that God sees them as pure and holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. And I was wanting to write that verse to the perfect apostles in Jerusalem who do not sin anymore and, and about the cherubims and seraphims. And now, oh no, I made that stupid mistake in writing that verse to the stubborn church in Colossae. Oh no, Holy Spirit, please repair it. <laughs> no, it was no uh, mistake that the Holy Spirit talks about you, talks about us being perfect, being holy without blemish and free from accusation. And of course, God did not lose his sight. He did not turn blind so that he does not realize that sometimes we fail and sometimes we dirt in our feet. But still, Jesus says, you are clean. And how wonderful it would be if we more and more understand deeper how God sees us. That he, of course, sees when you fail and sin. 
But he's not looking on the dead parts of your being. He's looking on the part that, that are alive. And if my wife tells me I love you, she does not want to make clear to me that he loves my beautiful feet. No, she loves who I am and who I have become. And it's the same with God. If we sees you today, he sees the new creation inside of you. He sees the parts that have come alive through his grace. And this is what he's looking on. And so God can see you and say about you, you are holy, without blemish, with, and free from accusation. And how wonderful it would be if we l would learn more and more how the Father sees me. If I was, would start to feel about me more and more how the Father feels about me. And a third attitude and a third aspect he sees in me is that he believes in me. Jesus says in the verses following that he puts uh, an example in front of us that we should follow. So if we should follow Jesus, he's really believing that I'm, I will and that I'm able to through his power. So God believes in you. He believes that you will do it. And sometimes we feel as such a failure that we have the impression that God is like a coach outside that is getting mad and crazy because the team is not playing well. And there are really some funny coaches uh, in the football or soccer world. <laughs> if some, some coaches, they collect more red and yellow cards than the players because they lose it and they get angry. They shout, they put their head on the floor and they uh, smash their uh, drinking bottles and they get mad. And you think this coach would love to step over that line he's not, not allowed to and play better than the, than the uh, players. And God is not like that. He's not getting crazy because he sees you failing all the time and he's getting mad and crazy and is losing it. No, he's believing in you because he sees the power inside of you. And you are not a hopeless case. So this morning I want to ask you two questions. How good are you allowing God the Father to love you? And wouldn't it be wonderful if you allow the Father and repeat the words, the thoughts, and the feelings that the Father has over you. I am so worthy. I'm so valuable. I'm so loved. I'm so forgiven. I'm so clean. I'm so able. Why not repeating the words that the Holy Spirit says over you, your heart? And my second question is, who is there that you can wash the feet? Which Judas is there in your life? That God wants you to show him honor and show him God's love. And let us pray this morning. And yeah, allowing God to love us and also being motivated to love our next. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your clear example that you showed us of Jesus' life. And I pray that we become more like you. That we allow you, Father, to love us before we try to love you back. And also that we look yeah, which person is there that I want that I should, should wash the feet and that I should honor and love him like you love me. Amen.